Wooly and the Thunder. Winter has arrived, and a cold wind blows. The sky is cloudy, and soon there will be snow. Wooly lies cuddled, in his blanket he's warm. No need to go outside in the storm. Suddenly, from outside, a light flashes bright. Little Wooly shivers with fright. And right after the light comes a very loud sound. A sound so loud, it shakes the ground. It's thunder and lightning, the wintry pair, crashing and thundering through the cold winter air. Lightning says, this winter I shall rule. I will be king as long as it's cool. And thunder lets loose a rolling great chuckle, a sound so loud your knees nearly buckle. Wooly looked out at the sky and thought in his head, thunder and lightning, I'll just stay in bed. One makes loud noise, the other one flashes. I don't think I'll mind if I miss any classes. But on his way back to bed, he was startled by a yelp. It was Johnny the dog, yelping for help. He was trembling all over, from his nose to his tail. He even tried to hide in a pail. I've got to help John, Wooly thought to himself. He got up and paced from his bed to the shelf. Then suddenly, a grin appeared on his face, a sign that his brain had begun to race. You should be ashamed, Wooly said to the thunder and lightning. You don't rule this winter, even if you are frightening. Long before you, the wind was here, whistling far and blowing near. If you ask me, I'll tell you, it's true. Wind is the king, definitely not you. The pair of them stopped and looked at each other. Could the king truly be another? Where is the wind? Tell us right now. We'll find him and explain to whom he must bow. Find him we must. There can only be one king. That breezy young pup must understand this thing. And then, without even waiting for an answer you know, the pair went to find just where the wind blows. At last, it was quiet, and all breathed a sigh. Thunder and lightning were gone from the sky. And if by chance you see lightning flash, or hear the sound of thunder crash, then know it's the sound of the stormy pair arguing with the wind high up in the air. Wooly and the Snow On a cold winter day, a little dark and gray, the first winter snow came falling flake after flake. And in the kitchen, Wooly was baking a treat, fresh angel biscuits that he loves to eat, a touch of brown cinnamon, and a flower he takes, some sugar to decorate, they're so simple to make. As he placed the cookies in the oven to bake, he became fascinated by the beautiful white snowflakes. Come out and play, the snow called to Wooly, and out he went and forgot about his cookies. <laughs> Sam was already outside, white from head to toe, from jumping and rolling around in the snow. Together they played, with joy and with glee, until all of a sudden, what did Wooly see? From the oven chimney, a black cloud of smoke. He forgot the cookies in the oven. That's no joke. He ran to the kitchen, but it was already too late. The cookies just lay there, burnt on the plate. Like chunks of black coal, they lay on the pan. And all that's left are candies. That wasn't our plan. Wooly sat down, frustrated and sad. Then he saw Sam's tail bounce and wag. But what is Sam the dog doing in the snow? Snow rabbits and snow bears, he's building, of course. Wooly, of course, comes to join in the fun. If there's a game going on, he won't be outdone. 
Look how much snow he can gather so fast. It's so much fun. We want this game to last. When they had finished the work, they both took a look and said, that's not how rabbits look in a book. And the bear does not really look like a bear. What is missing? Maybe some hair? Sam said, I know. There's no eyes and no tail, and I believe the mouth is missing as well. A bear's not a bear if he doesn't have hair. We must, I think, put hair on this bear. I have an idea, Sam. I know just what we'll do. We'll use these burnt cookies and the colored candies, too. We'll sprinkle some on the top and on the sides, too. Now that's much better. Yes, that will do. So even if it's snowing outside and it's colder than cold, your cookie's burnt and the cheese has grown mold, you can still have fun if you know where to look. Just take the colored candies and your coat off the hook. Wooly and the Sea. What a very hot day it's going to be. So Wooly and his family are going to the sea. Riding in the car, the sun shining bright, and at the beach, the family arrives. Daddy took out an umbrella for shade while Mommy prepared the food she had made. Wooly stood alone and looked at the sea. He looked far away, as far as can be. And a wondrous thought captured Wooly's bright mind. Where does this wonderful sea end, he must find. Where do the waves come from, and where do they go? And from where do the salty waters flow? How do shells arrive on the beach? Where do seagulls come from, and why do they screech? And where does the yellow sun go at the end of the day? Where does it hide, to where does it drift away? Even when Wooly looked as hard as he could, he saw nothing unusual, though he thought that he should. Just blue without end, both sky and the sea, and seagulls flying high, careless and free. He tried very hard, but to his dismay, the soaring blue waves were in his way. What would he do? thought little Wooly with grieve. How would he find out what's at the end of the sea? But as always, he thought of a brilliant plan, not simple, of course, but Wooly began. He started gathering a great pile of sand, as much as he could gather in his two little hands. He gathered sand in buckets, and he gathered sand in pots. He used his own two hands and his blue can that he had brought. And all the sand he gathered to build a ladder very high, a ladder made of sand that almost reached the sky. And when the work was completed, as he had planned, while he climbed up the ladder, he built out of sand. He climbed and climbed for quite a while. Why, Wooly must have climbed quite nearly a mile. And from the white fluffy cloud way up high to find the end of the sea he did try. But even then, when he looked as hard as he could, he did not see what he thought that he should. The end of the sea he just couldn't find. Only endless blue waters and nothing else behind. And Wooly thought to himself, Maybe the sea has no end. So he climbed down and went to play in the sea, his friend. Wooly and the Puddle It's great to go out and play. 
when the rain has finally gone away. So when Wooly saw the sky was clear, he left his house from the door in the rear. Outside the house, there waits a breeze, as nice a breeze as you could please. The world now seems quite fresh and new, the grass awash in morning dew. Like diamond drops on blades of green, what a perfectly delightful scene. Wooly smiled and then walked along, humming his most favorite song. Under the pine tree, what a treat, delicious mushrooms he could eat. They're always there, after the first rain. It rains, they grow, they don't complain. When he moved in for a better look, he'd seen these mushrooms in a book. His foot got wet, so it was plain he stepped in a puddle left by the rain. Wooly was glad his boots were on, even though the rain was gone. But what's this floating? Can you see? Three leaves have fallen off a tree. They don't look glad. They look rather sad. I think that they would rather be back at the top of their beloved tree. Wooly saw that they were sad and told them that it's not that bad. In fact, he told them, I'd love to float all day long just like a boat. I think you're very lucky, Leaves. You could sail to see the seven seas. The leaves didn't really understand till Wooly asked some birds to land. He raised his arms above his head, and the birds in song he led. The birds sang a pretty song, not too short, not too long. The leaves at last began to smile. They danced a dance, while all the while, Wooly and his friends looked on, clapped their hands, and joined in song. Wooly and the Dark. In the evening, when Wooly was getting ready for bed, he looked out his window at the sun that soon would be red. Below the horizon, he saw the sun float away, and he knew that it was the end of another day. Oh, sun, Wooly said, sweet dreams and good night. I'll see you tomorrow at dawn's first light. Then the sky changed color and became a dark blue, and it was time for the stars to start shining too. Then in came Mommy to tuck Wooly in. It's time now for bed, she said with a grin. She kissed little Wooly and covered him with care, and on his pillow she placed Timmy the bear. Mommy kissed Wooly and told him good night, and as she left his room, she turned off the light. Wooly counted sheep and tried to go to sleep. He rolled around in bed and with Timmy he played, but of the darkness in his room, he was afraid. Wooly was starting to shiver with fright when he saw something twinkling bright in the night. He got up and pulled the curtain aside to see what it was that twinkled outside. And there in the sky, what a wonderful sight, a comet in the sky, sparkling bright. There's no need to be scared of the dark, 
the comet said. I'll go get some friends, and we'll have a party instead. Wooly opened the window wide, and all the stars flew inside. Hello, Wooly. We've come to play with you. What is it that you would like to do? Wooly's new friends all came from afar and made for Wooly a blanket of stars. But still, Wooly couldn't sleep that night. The stars in the blanket were much too bright. The blanket of stars was Wooly's to keep, but it certainly didn't help him to go to sleep. So Wooly got up and said to the stars, I thank you for all coming so far. It would be enough if just one of you stayed. I think I'm quite ready to call it a day. The stars said good night and returned to the sky. Wooly counted sheep, but barely counted five. And now, dear Wooly, we bid you good night. And the stars are all whispering, sleep tight. Wooly and the Cloud One day, when the falling rain had finally stopped, Wooly saw a rainbow from behind the mountain top. So many colors. What a delight! I should get Mom and show her this sight. Then, all of a sudden, came a cloud big and white. And the colorful rainbow was almost out of sight. Oh, no, no, no. Now what should I do? I want Mom to see the rainbow, too. Excuse me, Cloud, Little Wooly said. Could you please float somewhere else instead? But the cloud ignored him and stayed in its place while the golden sun made a silly face. Wooly decided, with a determined grin, to find where it is that rainbows begin. He'd climb the rainbow way up high, move the cloud and tell it goodbye. He found the place where the rainbow rose to meet the sky and tickle its nose. Little Wooly climbed and didn't stop until he reached the very top. He turned to the cloud, who had appeared so rude. Would you mind moving, if you're in the mood? I'd really like for Mom and I to watch the rainbow in the sky. The little cloud was very polite. He didn't want to cause a fight. He smiled, then he caught a breeze and went to visit his friends, the trees. Then Wooly slid down the rainbow to the ground and showed his mother the rainbow he'd found. And our story's ending. You won't want to miss. Wooly's mother gives him a kiss. Wooly and the Tractor. One morning, when Wooly opened his eyes, he got out of bed and stretched with a sigh. He heard the sound of a big engine running, 
and saw a big tractor that was working and humming. It had a big scoop right there in the front, and it pushed a great pile of dirt with a grunt. Wooly thought, why is that tractor working so hard? Is it building a fence or a ditch in the yard? Wooly went outside to see what he could and watched from the side where it's safe by the woods. The tractor's been digging an hour or so. It's making a ditch through which water will flow. It will flow through a pipe that's buried in the ground and bring water to the people that live all around. But wait, where is it this pipe will go? Into the garden right here, just so? It will dig up the flowers and the grass that's grown so long. I just can't allow it. That would be wrong. That's what Wooly said to himself as he thought what to do. Then he asked the tractor to wait just a moment or two. Then Wooly walked over to the flowers, who were scared, and showed them that there was one person who cared. He dug round the flowers, as gentle as can be, and he lifted them out of the ground carefully. He put them in a box and placed it on his knees and called to the tractor. Now you can start, if you please. The tractor continued digging the ditch in the dirt and then the pipe in the ground he tried to insert. Then Wooly took the flowers and started to dig. He put the flowers inside the new house that was big. And the flowers who had been before so full of fright now wore expressions that were happy and bright. Everyone was happy that all had ended so well, and they agreed it would be a great story to tell. Of the tractor that came to work in the yard one day, and almost took the home of the flowers away. a dream. Take a pillow, a blanket, and a nice big chair. Sit in the garden and enjoy the fresh air. A wonderful idea you may want to keep. In just a few moments, you will fall fast asleep. Wooly loves these magical times. Sometimes he even dreams in rhymes. He dreams many dreams, some happy, some strange, and they seem to come alive. They seem so real. Just last week, he had met a cloud in his dream, fluffy and white, and friendly and sweet. They played hide-and-seek and ran with great speed. They hid in the garden and in the green trees. Then the cloud, quite suddenly, turned into a bear, a great white bear, that drifted in the air. But Wooly wasn't frightened. It was only a dream, and dreams aren't always quite what they seem. Yesterday, Wooly dreamed of the seasons, and which one comes first, and for what reason. In the dream, the seasons were a little confused. In winter, people walked around with no shoes. In the spring, quite suddenly, it started to snow, and in autumn, the flowers began to grow. And then the four seasons he invited to see how he could arrange them as he knew they should be. Wooly arranged them all in a row, he puts spring first, then summer, just so. Then comes autumn and winds that blow. Then last comes winter and it's falling white snow. But sometimes, a little too often it seems, Wooly has some frightening dreams. Why, two weeks ago, or maybe it was three, Wooly dreamed he was down by the sea. A fish was stuck in a pool on the beach and could not find a way to get back to his family. But lucky for the fish, Wooly was there, and Wooly's the kind of boy who cares. He dug a big ditch right back to the sea, and he did not stop till the fish was free. The grateful fish swam back to his school, under the sea where it's blue and it's cool. The fish was grateful, and his family too. Thank you, Wooly, for being you. And when Wooly awakes, 
Sometimes it seems that he was just waiting to dream his next dream. For in our dreams, anything can take place. You can fly to the stars and even to outer space. Wooly and the Playground. Twilight, what a magical time of day. It seems the colors in the sky do play. The sun sets slowly far away, and there's only a few moments left to play. And if you listen closely, you can hear the sound of Wooly and his friends playing in the playground. Wooly loves swinging on the swing and climbing over everything. Up the rope ladder he climbs, they're all having the best of times. Suddenly, from the old tree nearby, comes a scared and little cry. Benjamin the kitten is stuck in the tree. He cannot climb down, you see. He climbed way up high without any fear. But how is he going to get down from here? How can Wooly help him down from the tree? He knows that an easy task this won't be. How can he climb such a tree? It's so high. But it seems like he must at least give it a try. Wooly searched his brain for a clever plan. I must help Benjamin. I know I can. And then the idea appeared just like that. The way to save the stranded cat. He called to Benjamin. Don't fall. Don't crash. I'll be up there in a flash. He tied the slide to the swing with a piece of sturdy string. He added the ladder to the pile and started climbing with a smile. When he reached the top, he called to Ben. Here's your way back down, my friend. Here's the ladder, no need to fear. I'll climb down too, I'll be quite near. And so the kitten and the woolly little boy descended to the ground with joy. And after tidying everything around, they played and played until the sun went down. 